everybody. My name is Abby and I'm a sales manager here at Up42 based in Denver, Colorado. Welcome to the webinar. Today I am joined by Sven or, and Liveo, a geospatial company who builds vegetation management solutions for electric utilities. Liveo helps their customers monitor infrastructure from space and its leading solution provides actionable insights for operators of large scale linear infrastructure. Ben, their co-founder, will be presenting their journey and the challenges faced with automating their solution. Later, I will be providing an intro to who Up42 is and how we work together with customers like Liveo. And lastly, we will follow with some Q&A where the speakers will be able to answer your questions. Before we get started, let's get familiar with the platform. On your right hand side, you will see the following options, chat, questions, and poll. For chat, come say hello and tell us where you're from. For questions, if you have any questions throughout the presentations, please put them here. And if you see questions that you like, please upvote as it'll increase the chance that it'll be answered during the Q&A. And for a poll, while we're here, we're actually gonna start with a poll. So what industry are you working in? So without further ado, I'd like to invite Sven to the stage and our customer spotlight with Liveo. Take it away, Sven. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to speak today to, to um, your customers and the interested uh, general public about what we do with satellite data and how we are working together with Up42 to bring satellite-based vegetation management to more and more utilities uh, on a global scale. I'm going to talk a little bit today about the challenges which are which you will find on the way uh, to a full automation of any kind of Earth observation application. And, and what I can tell you already, there are a lot of challenges. But with some of them, Up42 can help you. So. The main topic of the of the talk today will be utility vegetation management, um, and how uh, what kind of measures can be taken to avoid trees and power line conflicts. Uh, the measures obviously uh, are and are coming from satellite data and through satellite data analytics. Um, and really, utility vegetation management has been the center of uh, of our focus here at LiveView for the last four to five years. But why? Um, every year in the US alone, between 18 to 33 billion US dollars are lost um, due to um, weather related power outages. That's, an, of course, a rough estimation, but I think everyone who has opened uh, a newspaper uh, or has looked on a, on a news site or watched TV has seen what catastrophic effects the recent hurricanes, storms, or wildfires. Um, have had and also what kind of an impact, uh, for example, the blizzard last year had on the electric grid and electrical power uh, supply uh, throughout the United States, but also everywhere else across the globe, really uh, maintaining vegetation next to overhead lines is an important topic of the key um, task for utilities to yeah, be able to provide their customers with uh, a reliable um, energy supply. That's why utilities spend every single year billions on US dollars or euros on inspections and cutbacks of overhead lines on large scale. But this money is currently still often applied in a kind of cycle-based process, which is working, obviously, but which, is, um, which, which can be improved from our perspective. And one method to improve this kind of inspection method is um, in our perspective, a satellite-based solution, right? Because satellite data has the unique advantage over any other kind of data source to provide the customer with a large-scale overview over their entire network, which is very difficult to gain with drones, with helicopters, or with foot patrols. So what we do at Live here is we analyze satellite data and bring it to the end user in the field. And really the, the main steps are four. First, create an instant overview of the entire network. 
we identify where risks are, so where vegetation causes a risk to the integrity of the network. And then we break this information down in work orders, we prioritize these and provide this information in the end to the end user in the field via our web and mobile app. It's, a, it's an easy process, it seems like, but there's a lot of technology behind that. We are, and have here around 50 engineers working on that because there are a lot of uh, difficult tasks from satellite data access to machine learning to generating the intelligence from that. But I'm going to talk about these uh, in, in more detail within the next few minutes. So, to maybe again give you a little bit of additional kind of background, we are here at LiveVIEW. We've been founded in 2018. We have customers, um, and I'm going to show you a few of the examples in a second, all across Europe and North America, South America, and Asia Pacific, the Asia Pacific region. But we are based here in Germany and have a new US office. Uh, we this year, uh, we're very happy to, to get the uh, first prize uh, from the European Association of Remote Sensing Companies. And um, yeah, we have, have partners such as SAP, Info, and others with which we bring the satellite data analytics to the end user. Always what we do, uh, and every time we do an analysis, we do this kind of analysis for a large-scale infrastructure operator. Because what we say is that infrastructure grids are really the backbone of our modern society. And we want to help the operators of these networks to maintain them more effectively and more efficiently through satellite data. Luckily, we were already able to uh, yeah, convince grid operators, as I mentioned, on all continents except Africa, um, to use this uh, kind of data source to make their processes more efficient. Our first customer has been the German railway operator, one of the world's biggest railway operators, which has a grid of more than 33,000 kilometers, around 20,000 miles. So from day one, we were uh, pushed to build solutions which, which are able to scale. But what do we do? And let's maybe dive a little, bit, a little deeper and read the process. Which we, which, we, which we perform to take data, raw satellite data, and to extract insights which are then really useful and used by operators on a global scale. As you most probably all know, um, there's not only one satellite in space or a few, but many, many from many different operators. And what we do at LiveView is we combine this data from this range of satellite operators. We get the data via API, we harmonize this data in our cloud infrastructure because also, uh, if you're already a little bit familiar with satellite data, you know, when we're talking about images, we're talking about big, big data packages. And so what we, and where we need, where we process the satellite data is in the cloud just because otherwise we wouldn't be able to, for example, analyze the entire US transmission network as we already have done so. Once we have gathered the data from these different operators, and once we have um, harmonized and stored this data in our database, we apply our own self-developed AI algorithms uh, onto this data to identify precisely and with very high precision, but on large scale, where trees are too close to overhead lines, um, where vegetation could be an issue to the asset. We don't stop there because what we've seen is that although there are a lot of utilities which, which have a high interest in satellite data and also maybe some own capabilities in um, yeah, breaking this satellite data down into, or yeah, analyzing the satellite data to some degree, what we believe is, is, a, is often a big gap between technical capabilities and then really the uptake uh, at the end company is that this data has to be broken down into actionable work orders, and that this, this data also has to be distributed to users throughout the organization. And that's exactly what we do in the last part of our process chain. Now, this diagram looks pretty easy and, uh, and pretty straightforward, but there are a lot of challenges which we had to overcome over our last four years of company history. The first challenge which we had to overcome was the data selection challenge, because as already mentioned, there are several data sets required per customer. No customer, at least from our uh, experience, 
can be um, yeah can be really served with only one data source from one satellite data. So um, or also you can't always take the same kind of satellite data source for a multitude of operators. So what you need to do to really get the the biggest impact at the customer is to combine. Uh, a multitude of different satellite data sources with different temporal, spatial, and spectral resolu resolutions to create the best result. And also another caveat is that the different satellite constellations have inherent quality differences. Doesn't mean that one constellation is better than the other, but it means that one constellation is sometimes better for one customer than another satellite. And this really needs evaluation and trial and error, and that's something. But really, we've made a lot of learnings over the last couple of years with, with, with some of our clients. The second challenge which we had to overcome is the data acquisition challenge, meaning that a lot of satellite operators not yet have standard APIs established. Um, and so we have built individual APIs, and now obviously are very happy about companies such as Up42, which provide standardized APIs. Um, these APIs are necessary to be able to deal with the complex AOIs, which infrastructure grids just represent, and to also get the data there cost effectively. Uh, we didn't want to get into manual sales processes, which a lot of satellite operators still have in place. And it's also one of the challenges which we had to face was um, that right now some satellite operators really don't, don't optimize for speed, but what we need is a quick turnaround solution to deliver nearly up-to-date insights to our end clients. So that was the second challenge we were able to overcome. The third one is the processing challenge, and I've briefly already touched on this topic. Um, satellite data um, is, is, in the size, is coming in the size of petabytes of data, um, so that's the first challenge here which we had to overcome. To build, we had to build our entire system in the cloud. The second thing is that we had to build industry-specific risk models to, um, yeah, to then process not only the, the satellite imagery, but also the insights in such a way that they are valuable for the end client. And um, we had uh, to do all of this, so the AI analytics of the imagery, as well the risk modeling afterwards, in such a way that it consistently creates high accuracy results with varying data sources on large scale and in a, in, a, in a short kind of time frame. Because if you have a client who has tens of thousands of kilometers of miles of infrastructure grid, right, you have to be able to perform quickly in the context of your infrastructure grid, but still with a high quality. And that was the third challenge uh, which we had to overcome. So to summarize it, there are a lot of steps on the way to reach full automatization. First one is you have to somehow find transparent one-stop data shop, right? Or multiple shops to really get the data from these different satellite systems and to be able to harmonize this data and access this data on large scale. For that, solid APIs for AOI pays purchases are required. Um, all of that requires a lot of SDKs, both on the data provider side, but also internally a lot of automation. Um, you, you need a lot of deep understanding of, of customer needs, which is then tra uh, translated into, um, into the, uh, into the yeah, actionable insights creation. Uh, you need uh, generalized machine learning models and all of, all of that in a highly scalable cloud infrastructure. And obviously, you have to test and iterate all of that. So there are many, many steps until you are able to reach the full automation. And we haven't even spoken about the sales process afterwards, right? Luckily, we found Up42 as a reliable partner to help us with these first steps, right? To provide us with data sources, to provide us with an AOI-based purchase model, and to provide us with a high degree of automation. And we really have taken, uh, have taken our, our uh, solution and, for example, the data, uh, data source by Up42 on the next level and have rolled this out to tens and tens of thousands of miles on all these continents which I've said, but I want to make it very crisp. With our own customer case study, for example, a distribution utility, it's an Eon subsidiary, one of Europe's biggest utilities, where we've gone on a full 
rollout on medium voltage on the medium voltage network uh, where we have um, helped them to improve the vegetation management practice uh, which was is currently run with subcontractors and on a multi-million uh, dollars budget annually right and with our satellite data analytics which we've performed on the entire network we have, have given them a tool to, to improve these processes and currently working with this customer on a very close basis to, to um, yeah, ever evolve our tool set and their um, use of that. Because how did the situation look in the past? They didn't have a real overview. With satellite data, we were able to create that overview and give them a better kind of handling of the subcontractors. We have them to move away from a cycle-based model uh, which, which sometimes miss danger spots, the trees which were too close to the overhead lines, and have them to, to move in the direction of a, uh, of a, of a, improve, uh, of a prioris, prioritized model where they were able to effectively identify spots where they had to maintain vegetation, which improved reliability and decreased costs, and then have them with the entire digitalization of the process to move away from a tedious manual communication process to a completely automated reporting. But just to give you an impression of how that looks in, in, in practice, I just want to give you for two minutes or so a quick demo of our tool. So let me quickly share um, my screen. Right. So we, what you see right here is, is our demo account. So that's not the live, uh, live tool uh, with our customers because we don't uh, we can't and we don't want to share any kind of custom, proprietary customer information. So this is an open network in the east of Berlin. And I would just want to take this, this chance to, um, uh, to, to show you a little bit how our general processes look like. So this is the overhead line alongside which we identify vegetation. Um, and you see the overhead line, that's information which we get from the customer. And you see left and right to it vegetation uh, as these green kind of patches. Um, these green patches represent the, the vegetation, the trees which we've identified uh, next to the overhead line. And you also see that there are different kind of shades of green. These different shades of green represent different height classes, height information. Uh, we get height information from, for example, 3D satellite image analysis. And based on this information, we can make very sophisticated risk assess, uh, assessments alongside the entire network. To give you an example, this is a transmission overhead line, so high poles, right? And you have an overhead line which is, in this case, for example, is allowed to hang over trees if there's a big enough distance between the tree canopy and the overhead line. And so what we do is we identify where trees are, where the overhead line is. We identify uh, where the overhead line is exposed to this external threat, where the, where the, um, where the uh, tree canopy is causing that threat. And we're doing that on large scale, right? So we can do this again for thousands and thousands of kilometers thanks to satellite data. We have other features, vegetation species. We can integrate other, other things such as uh, weather data and so on. But really, that's the core of our analytics. Another question is, how do you make that really actionable on large scale? So what we do is we create actionable insights by breaking this kind of risk analysis down into tasks. That's why I've drawn this, this kind of polygon in the background. And this, this pulls up um, now 245 tasks alongside the network, which I can assign to, to, to a colleague of mine um, who can then work on this task and who, who gets this information who can drive out in the field. With this, I can, for example, yeah, really streamline my subcontractor process. And I can, for example, um, assign the areas where my vegetation is causing a lot of problems to a subcontractor who then has to take care of that. Or, for example, if that subcontractor has, has a contract for a certain area. Right. What you see now is that, so that pins have popped up for the network going from a green tone to red tone, depending on how much vegetation, critical vegetation is too, uh, too close to the line. Uh, what the subcontractor can do is, for example, he or she can prioritize and can, for example, filter for priority. Where do I have tasks with uh, only a high priority, a medium priority, or so forth, right? 
Okay, but let's let's go back into this example. So I have these these few tasks, and let's just zoom in into one task. What can I see here? I see that I have to that so Tim can see when he's out in the field, and we have a mobile app running on on multiple um, iOS, so on Android and iOS. Um, we have a mobile app, and with that mobile app, Tim can, for example, see well what has already been done here at this particular span. And what would he need? Uh, what would he need to do? For example, well, the tree needs to be removed. He would be able to see what the issue is. Well, the status of vegetation health is the tree is diseased. Uh, the right of way is in a bad condition. And well, there's a, there's some kind of infection in the tree. And then Tim, for example, on site, or I could also now fill out a protocol and could really um, write down what actions have followed the satellite data analytics. To sum it up, the manager not only gets the satellite overview from our web app, but can also see what's really happening on site in the field and see what kind of works have work orders have been uh, have been performed and really gets all these statistics from within that. So the other side of the of the thing is the mobile app. We don't have time for that, but I'm happy to show that to you maybe in a in a in a different kind of um, in a different kind of context or in a one-to-one -one demo. So coming back to the presentation, read really the last slide from my end is that I've, I've told you what kind of uh, difficult challenges you have to overcome to use satellite data for vegetation uh, monitoring. We have done that together with UP42, but if you're a utility and want to see the results of this kind of technology on your own network, we are more than happy to provide you with a free analysis of 50 kilometers or 30 miles of your network. Feel free to reach out to me at semenatlife-eo.com. Um, and really, the only thing for that is we need your GIS data. But I leave it with that. Thank you very much. I'm happy to answer questions at the end. I really have to say that UP42 has, has been a, a tremendous support and has really helped us to, to yeah, be able to overcome the satellite data acquisition challenge. Great. Thank you so much for that excellent presentation. I know everyone here at um, Up42 has been really excited to see what you all have accomplished in such a short amount of time. So thank you. So to shift gears a bit, I'm going to talk about how Up42 fits in. Up42 is a developer platform and a marketplace which enables geospatial providers like LiveVO to build solutions on top of remotely sensed data. And the reason for this is, as many of you already know, Data is often fragmented and hard to get access to, and it can also be difficult to do things with that data, such as build and train machine learning algorithms, as well as disseminate those algorithms easily. Lastly, as Sven mentioned, it can be challenging to scale with managing such large data sets and managing the infrastructure to support that data in order to support your customers' evolving needs. As a result, UP42 makes it easier with a centralized platform that simplifies the data purchasing process with an easy pay-as-you-go model to enable you to build solutions for various use cases across many industries to address your customers' evolving challenges. And we provide an easy-to-use cloud-based interface with a team to support you along the way. In addition, our marketplace has over 120 data and analytical capabilities from satellite imagery, aerial imagery, elevation data, radar data from various providers, as well as process data sets such as weather data and analytics for performing statistics and indices, as well as machine learning algorithms from leading analytics providers, all within the same platform. And as you heard earlier, in the case of LiveVO, UP42 enables your solution through access to Copernicus data, such as Sentinel-1 and 2 via our modern Python SDK and API, access to both archived and tasked high-resolution satellite imagery from various providers, such as Airbus for Pleiad, Head Aerospace for Superview, digital elevation models from multiple providers, such as Hexagon and Intermap, all to support their solution for vegetation management for their infrastructure customer. With that said, let's move on to some Q&A. I'd like to invite Sven to rejoin the stage. We can start with this one here. 
Sure, I think this question goes in my direction. Uh, can you provide some approximate ranges of cost per linear meter? So it's it's with satellite data, the one of the or the determining factor is the resolution as well as obviously the revisit frequency. So how high is the accuracy of your analysis and how often do you perform this kind of analysis? Our baseline solution starts at around 12 euros per kilometer. Uh, when you go higher resolution, you're around double of that and then uh, going higher, you, you are double of that. This means these kind of prices uh, are always for one kilometer, uh, for, for one line kilometer in one square kilometer because also with satellite imagery, although we now have a, have a more and more and better and better AOI kind of optimization method, if you have a highly dense network, the prices which I've just mentioned um, uh, are not really applicable, but the prices for your network, if it's denser than one kilometer of line per square kilometer, if your density is higher than that, the prices will be lower than the prices I've just mentioned. But this is kind of a range. Yeah. Thank you. Move on to another one. What's the percentage of type one and type two errors in the results, i.e. are encroaching trees ever missed or are crews ever sent to areas where there are no encroachments? Yeah, so that's a very good question. Um, and the, the answer is that it, it, it's, it's, it depends, right? So like, like, like often, but um, the, the thing here is that what we try to do is, so maybe like from an F1 score, right, we, we are able to perform against our test set with 90% plus accuracy, right? But that's obviously not always represents the, the real errors as described by you. So to, to, to really give the customer uh, a good feeling and a good understanding of the accuracy, for example, their network with their maybe special regional challenges or geographical challenges or whatever, what we do is we drive a two-way kind of QA process. On the one hand side, we validate our analytical results with, uh, with, with yeah, remote inspection. So we look at parts of the imagery and validate whether our analytics um, look right. The second part of that is that at the beginning of any kind of engagement with the customer, we offer our customer to exactly uh, validate this type one and type two errors. What we do for that is we draw a random sample size from the area which we've analyzed, provide the customer with a certain kind of functionality in our mobile app, where they can then drive to these individual spots and make these measurements for themselves to evaluate right what the error rate has been. And like the um, kind of validations in a, such a sense and with the, with the definition is how well does the classification um, yeah, represent the actual situation on site. There we are also have seen on-site validation results of 90 plus percent, right? The important thing is that you always have to compare that also with the, with the current kind of methodology where people go on site where some papers speak about the accuracy of, of 60 percent, but it always depends. But happy to agree, provide you with more detailed and dedicated examples of customers in different kind of geographical regions uh, in, a, in a separate call. Great, thank you. I believe we have one more, or time for one more. How does the use of satellite imagery compare to the other methods, such as capturing imagery with helicopters and drones? So that's a, also a very good question. So the so satellite imagery definitely isn't the, the golden bullet for everything which you want to do, right? If you're, for example, looking at at asset monitoring or asset maintenance, meaning that you want to inspect, for example, a power pole, they're really only drone or, or helicopter data can help you. But satellite data really gives you the, the lever, the advantage when you when you um, are, are monitoring um, big networks on a large scale, widely distributed, and when you're looking at, at identifying just vegetation, right? Their satellite data can really provide you with this grid wide overview. And then if you have the feeling that the accuracy uh, which the accuracy of satellite imagery, which has its limits at around 50 centimeters, right? Sometimes at 30 centimeters. If you have the feeling, well, that's not good enough for my kind of requirements, then satellite data really fits in in kind of the value stack to identify where a hotspot, where I need a helicopter or a drone. So they are not 100% um, replacing one another, but satellite data can do 
big parts of the job and where you need a high kind of accuracy to be down to the centimeters or millimeters, then you maybe want to use a helicopter or a drone. But what we've seen is that a lot of distribution utilities and transmission utilities are already fine with the kind of accuracy which satellite uh, data can offer because they would send out uh, people in the field to then take care of these spots anyways. Um, yeah, maybe that is a, is a short answer. Great, thank you. So it looks like that's all the time we have for answering questions, but as Ben said, it sounds like they're really happy to help answer any more of your questions that you had if they weren't answered today. But I uh, just wanted to thank you again for your excellent presentation and thank you for working with us. And then everyone else, thank you for joining. Um, please be on the lookout for a link for our recording. And we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Have a good one.